Hey, what's going on guys? It's Taryn here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the PlayStation Backbone 1 controller, second generation, which turns your iPhone 15 and Android into a pretty sweet gaming device on the go, which includes the ability to play PS5 games remotely, Xbox Game Pass, and even simply having more comfort and control over the mobile games on your phone. It's not perfect. There are big things that actually take away from the experience that I will get into, and I looked up a lot of common questions that a lot of people might have about this controller, that I hope to also answer in this video. Before we dive in, I want to thank Sleekstrip for partnering with me on today's video. They offer the Duo Flip, a unique MagSafe ID card holder for iPhones in elegant colors such as slate and chestnut. It's also incredibly functional as it can hold two cards, one hidden for privacy, enabling contactless transactions without actually exposing personal details on the card, and the other is a clear window ideal for displaying ID effortlessly. Its 180 degree flip design makes this super convenient from my experience. And it also doubles as a phone stand, so it makes it perfect for hands-free calls or enjoying videos while you're relaxing. It does come with an included retractor, so you can attach the dual flip to belts, pockets, backpacks, wherever you prefer. If you want to step it up and pick up their lanyard accessory as well, you can attach the dual flip on its own or attach it to your phone for even more added convenience. If you guys are interested in these accessories from Sleekstrip, be sure to click the link in the description down below to buy yours today. Thanks again sleek strip for partnering with me on this portion of the video okay let's talk about the backbone and its design it's a pretty sweet looking device and you can tell that they really thought through the development of this product it's an officially licensed playstation device so it features all the familiar buttons you'd find on a ps5 controller including the d-pad thumbsticks that are clickable for games that require sprinting for example l1 l2 r1 r2 triggers which by the way the l2 and r2 do have a bit of range to them but nothing like the depth of input you'd find on like a regular PS5 controller. Everything in general feels clicky and intuitive and I don't have a lot of complaints with how any of the buttons press. There's also proprietary buttons specific to the Backbone controller, which include an orange button to launch the Backbone app directly, a record button to record gameplay footage or screenshots, and a three dot button that can act as a shortcut to open up the PlayStation app. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to attach a headset, which also will work with the headset microphone if it does have one built in. And it has a USB-C port on the bottom to allow you to charge your phone while the backbone is attached, as well as give you the ability to use it wired on your computer. To set it up, you simply open up the controller, pop your phone into the USB-C port, and that's it, and it's ready to be used as a controller. It's not leveraging any Bluetooth, so you'll be getting the lowest latency possible for a setup like this, and the controller doesn't have a battery, so it will use power off of your phone, and it will go for as long as your battery lasts on your iPhone or Android. For anyone concerned if the controller actually drains a lot of the battery life, from my experience, it doesn't. It uses a very small amount of battery that isn't noticeable during my gaming sessions. A fun fact is that it also shows the PlayStation logo when it's fully opened, which is really cool. And when it's closed, it's just about the same width as a PS5 controller. So that's actually a pretty big deal in a positive way that we will get into later in the video. From my experience, it does fit really well with the iPhone 15, 15 Plus, 15 Pro Max, and 15 Pro. They, they all work with and without a case. I don't have any issues. It does come with magnetic clips, though, in case you need help with sizing your phone to fit snug with this device, but I found that I didn't actually need them to use it with any of the iPhone 15s, at least. In terms of ergonomics, it's not entirely a flat backside like a Nintendo Switch. It does have a little bit of a hump to it for extra comfort. When paired with a large phone like an iPhone 15 Pro Max, it doesn't feel that heavy. It's actually a pretty nice weight, and it's something that I actually could hold for a decent amount of time. To be clear, it, it's not winning any award for being incredibly ergonomic as a controller, but I find it's comfortable enough for, for how long I play on this for anyways, which really wouldn't be for more than an hour or two. So now that we've covered design, I want to dive deep into the intended yet controversial software experience of using the Backbone controller with the Backbone app. Full disclaimer, the full app experience does not come with the controller. You actually have to pay a subscription to unlock all of the features within the app, which as of this video, I think is about $50 a year, if I'm not mistaken. Honestly, that was disappointing. And I actually found that out after I bought the controller. I just feel like myself and all of us, we're just sort of tired and, and fatigued from subscriptions. And, and what amplifies this disappointment is that the app is actually really good. Like I actually really love 
the app experience. And I just have this conflict of in my mind of whether I want to keep the app after the, my free trial is over or, you know, get rid of it and then just kind of move on and use it without it. At first glance, it, it does an amazing job turning your iPhone into feeling like a true portable gaming device. It serves as a central hub for all the games you play across PlayStation Remote Play, Xbox Game Pass, Apple Arcade, literally any game you're playing on your iPhone, it can be centralized into the app in a really beautiful way. You can also search for controller compatible games across PlayStation, Apple Arcade, etc., all within the app, which is all also really convenient. It also supports in-app voice and text chat with friends across PlayStation and Xbox. You can live stream directly to Twitch. You can capture, edit, and share 1080p footage from your gaming sessions. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, this controller is the same width, more or less, of a PS5 controller. And that's actually a big deal because it can actually also be used as a standalone controller on any screen, such as a PC, Mac, iPads. And so because, you know, the width is the same, it, it does feel like a native controller for your computer, albeit the ergonomics are a little, they're a little iffy. They're not like a regular controller, but it's okay. And it's pretty simple. You just set it up within the settings in the app for your desired device that you're playing on and you just plug it in and it just works right away. But it's things like that. That, that sort of sting a little bit about this whole backbone subscription plus service. To gatekeep a feature like this behind a $50 paywall, like the ability to use your controller on a PC, Mac, or an iPad, I I'm not so sure about that. And because every other controller that you buy on the market that's also cheaper than the backbone controller does not need a subscription to get it to work across multiple devices like PC, Mac, iPad, and the original gaming device that it was intended for, like an Xbox or a PlayStation. And the backbone controller, I mean, it's not as good as a PS5 or an Xbox controller on its own as well. And it is more expensive than those controllers. So it's just a confusing proposition that I wish Backbone would reconsider here. But with all this aside, I do wanna clarify that you don't need the app for this controller to work. It's simply a service that you pay for that truly does deliver a plus efforts on making things convenient and fun when it comes to accessing your games on your iPhone. And I guess because it's a plus efforts, Maybe it is warranted that, you know, they're charging $50 a year. I'm so conflicted about it, but, uh, you know, I'll leave it in your hands whether that's going to be worth it to you or not. But now I want to talk more about the games and how it actually feels to play with this controller across different genre of games on your iPhone. For starters, the PlayStation Remote Play experience is pretty good but it is a little shy of being great. I have fiber internet here, so I have 1.5 gigabit up and down and Wi-Fi 6E, and my iPhone um, 15 Pro Max does also have support Wi-Fi 6E, so that's as good as it's gonna get uh, for internet these days on planet Earth, and the experience is great, for games that don't require a ton of precision, like Spider-Man 2, for example, I can comfortably play that and not feel too bogged down by the little bit of added latency that comes with remote play. Where things get really complicated and unfortunate is when you play games like NBA 2K24, for example. You wouldn't think about this because it's a sports game, but in 2K, you need to be extremely precise with your shot and being fast to run plays. And it's just not a fun experience to play a game like that over remote play because even the, the tiniest fractions of a second of a delay really just throws off any chance of, of winning a basketball game in like a Hall of Fame setting on 2K24. I'd imagine the same is true for all online competitive multiplayer, like first person shooter games as well. I don't really play any of those, so I can't demo that for you. I'm mostly an offline single player gamer, but rest assured, I'm fairly confident that your Call of Duty or Battlefield experience on remote play online will not be very competitive and you probably will wanna regress back to just playing on your TV or monitor. But what I will say with a caveat, that if you're gonna be playing offline first person shooters like Halo on Xbox Game Pass, that has actually been incredibly fun. And even though there's a little tiny bit of latency, it's it's great, it, it works fine. Or if you play games like Back for Blood as well, it, you know, it, it's just a treat in general to be able to access essentially Xbox caliber games at your fingertips on your iPhone with this controller 
without owning an Xbox. Like I don't own an Xbox in my home, but I get to play these games on the go whenever I feel like it. And speaking of the on the go 5G experience, using it with an iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's good, it, it works really well. As long as you have a strong connection outside of your house, you'll get the same great experience for offline games and things that don't actually require a ton of precision or, or low latency when you're playing them. When it comes to playing iPhone games like Call of Duty Mobile, for example, on the iPhone, it works great. I mean, perfect match, honestly. It's precise, it's a game built from the ground up for iPhone, and the controller really does enhance the experience a lot. And let me repeat that. The controller enhances the iPhone gaming experience so, so much. Even if you could just never tap into remote play or Xbox Cloud Gaming, the Apple Arcade and iPhone game experience is just so much better with this than without it. None of you will regret this purchase other than the fact that it's expensive and the Backbone Plus subscription model is disappointing. So I'd say that if you can get this on sale, which I did, I got it for about $50 off the regular price, it's worth it, even with some of the shortcomings that I mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're brand new to my channel. Comment hashtag I made it if you made it to the very end. And I'll talk to all of you guys in the next one. Peace.